The universe surely smiled when the young Dion Vingatas decided to make a career of cooking, and it snatched him all the way to his current position as the chef de cuisine at a prestigious Cape Town property. Dion knows that this is a busy time of the year for most of us, so he decided to treat us to a spa cuisine experience, which you can also enjoy at home. A big part of the spa experience is the delicious and nutritious food on offer that usually complements your treatment and adds to the overall experience. Today, Chef Dion Venkankas is going to show us how to create a delicious spa menu at home. Hi Dion, how are you? Are you alright in yourself? Good, thank you. Welcome back to Mela. Thank you very much, it's good to be back. I'm so excited to cook with you today. Tell me what's on the menu. We have a beautiful smoothie and we're going to be doing a bit of finger foods and then we're going to go over to a very healthy salad. One of my favourite salads I really enjoy eating at a brio if I'm just lazy and sitting next to the telly, it's beautiful. And then we're going to go with um, three main ingredients that a lot of bodybuilders and uh, gym freaks sort of tend to eat. Your boiled chicken, your broccoli, and your sweet potato. And lastly, we're gonna play around with a little bit of peanuts and banana, but we're gonna make it healthy, but at the same time, uh, sort of like a sneaky sweet dessert. Dion, you're my kind of guy. Let's get started. Okay, let's start off with the yogurt. You wanna get the um, liquid base into the blender to start it with so it doesn't catch together when blending it. Get the kale, your toasted walnuts, the green apple, baby spinach, celery and then the two secret ingredients the green chili which I've de-seeded so it's just the flavor not the intensity or the spice or heat of the actual green chili a bit of mint for that freshness so we're basically taking ingredients that you'd find in a walled of salad and we're blitzing it up into a smoothie perfect nice and smooth I just want to get a glass please if you don't mind you Krishma thank you Okay, cool. Shall we taste it? Yes, cheers. Thank you. That actually is so delicious. The nuts give it a creaminess. And you can really taste that beautiful but subtle chilli flavour coming through at the end. Should we get started on the canapes? Perfect. Okay, so we're going to be making a salmon tartare which goes on the sago cracker. Wow, I can't wait to taste those. Firstly, we're going to start with the stuffed avocado. So what we're going to do is just take a bit of cold smoked salmon that we just want to chop off very finely and then add a bit of the chunky cottage cream cheese, some chopped chives, and then just a touch of white pepper, and some salt. Not a lot of salt because the cold smoked salmon is quite salty as it is because it's been cured. You just want to gently combine this together. When eating it, you want this sort of mixture that's stuffed inside of the actual avocado to sort of like explode in your mouth when you're eating it. What I want to do is get the avocado, which I've prepared early on. I've sliced the avocado very thinly and place it on a double sheet of cling film. And then the mixture that we've made early on, you basically just want to stuff in the center of the actual avocado and then carefully lift the sides of the cling film up and sort of cuddle the ingredients that you have inside. So you could basically use this avocado as a vessel for whatever you'd like to put inside of it. I prefer the smoked salmon and cottage cheese because it goes really well with the avocado, but the possibilities are endless. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this with the two that I've made early on, and then what we're gonna do is use the rye croutons as the base of vessel to pick the stuffed avocado up with. What I've done is you can take your old rye bread that you have at home that's a bit stale and put it into the freezer. Once it's frozen, very solid, you can use a very sharp bread knife to thinly shave it and bake it at 100 degrees for for five minutes and you get this nice colorless but toasted rye root. So we're just going to unravel these balls that we've made early on. Just be very careful to get all the plastic off. You don't want any of your guests eating the plastic and you're gently going to place it on top of the actual rye crouton. You just want to add a little bit of sesame seeds on top of the actual avocado and then just a bit of porridge. They literally taste like the ocean. We're gonna go with the tata now. You mind passing the bowl, please? Okay, so inside of the bowl, you want a bit of your chopped up salmon. I've used the belly ends because they're much more fattier, moist, and it works much better for tata. Bit of the coriander that's been chopped up. Just a little bit of sesame seeds. What I've done is toasted the sesame seeds. It's best if you toast it just before you're about to add it to the tata because the flavor is more predominant and works better with the salmon. And then some red onion. And then just for seasoning, a touch of soya sauce. Not too much again, because the salmon is quite salty. And then a little bit of mutton just for some sweetness. 
Okay, so you just want to mix it up, make sure that all the flavors are amalgamated really nicely. You just want to grab your Sago cracker and break them up a little bit, sort of bite size. Okay, so you just want to place a little bit of the mixed salmon that you've done on top of the actual Sago cracker. Dion, that looks exquisite. It looks like the sea sand with the salmon placed on top of it. Very cool. Uh, it's like taking the salmon back to its natural environment. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just going to pop the avocado sort of cottage cheese bombs that we made earlier onto the platter. Okay, there we go, Karishma. You have your smoothie for your pre-drinks and your pre-drink welcome canapes for your health dining function. So let me fetch the ingredients for the next two dishes. Dion, this looks beautiful. What do we have here? Okay, so we have the ingredients for our nut and seed, the pomegranate and quinoa salad. It's all of my favorite nuts and crunchy bits that I like in a salad. What are your thoughts on superfoods? I'm a big fan of superfoods. Huh? I couldn't agree more. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to sort of get all of the pups out of the pomegranate. You want to cut it down the center widthwise and then just sort of cuddle it into your palm and grab a spoon and you just want to lightly tap it to start off with and most of the pups just fall out and once you get half of it out you can aggressively sort of tap it in and you'll just feel all of it fall into your fingers and just move your fingers around and then it falls out without any of the half. That's a great tip. Okay, that's most of the seeds and now we just want to start compiling the rest of it together. I use millet because it's gluten free as well. You get a lot of guests that you might have for a dinner party and they gluten intolerant or just might not prefer any gluten in their food. So just a bit of quinoa, what I've done is cook the white and the red quinoa. It doesn't matter, they're about the same though. No? Okay, all of our lovely nuts and seeds, chia seeds, antioxidant, walnuts that I've left a bit whole as well, your pumpkin seeds, sultanas, it's dried, some dried banana, raisins, your sunflower seeds, your linseed, flexi seed, cashew nuts. Oh, I love these cashew nuts when I go to Mozambique and these ladies toast them on the side of the road, but you get that light burnt edges, this nice roasted nutty taste. Wow, they're phenomenal. Just a bit of goji berries. I remember as a kid, the Muslim auntie down the road, the uh, teens would sell these little sweets with goji berries in or this nut mix. It was phenomenal. So as a little kid, I never understood what goji berries were and how beneficial it is to your health. Okay, your pine nuts. A bit of the toasted coconuts, your favorite. Some of the fresh pea shoots. Sunflower shoots, I've used it because I have some of the actual sunflower seeds inside of it. Cranberries. And lastly, your toasted almonds. Okay, so you just want to mix it up nicely before you add your dressing so it's all sort of like in the view, evenly distributed within the actual salad because your dressing is going to sort of like cling to it and keep them separated. I've made the dressing specifically with avocado oil, fresh lemon, fresh lime juice. I've added a bit of salt and a touch of honey inside. So you just want to get your dressing in. I hate overdressed salad, so I just use a little bit of dressing. Most of the time I use freshly squeezed lemon juice and just a little bit of olive oil if I want to bring a bit of creaminess to it. And if you could just pass the bowl to me, please, Karishma. Oh. And then you carefully just want to place it inside. You just want to add a little bit of your salad a little bit in at a time. It builds nice height and keeps it nice and neat. You just want to finish it up with a little bit of your alfalfa sprouts. And there you go. Simple, clean, very easy to put together. Dion, what's our next dish? Okay, next we're going to be doing the chicken, broccoli and sweet potato sort of combination. I just want to start by getting a pot on the stove to come to a boil. We have this chicken breast that I've cooked early on. The magical thing about it is you want to get your health foods in. So you want your boiled chicken, you want your sweet potato and you want your broccoli. But often your chicken tends to be too dry. So what I've done, I've cooked it in a bag. You have a lot of modern ovens where you can just put your chicken breast on a low temperature. So I cook it at 63 degrees for two hours and it's like butter. You'll never get a chicken more buttery in this. I'm literally just going to pop it into the boiling water and we're going to take the chicken off of it. We've got our chicken sort of warming through nice and slowly. Just want to get the pan onto the stove and then start cooking our sweet potato and broccoli. You just want to add a little bit of olive oil to the pan. Grapeseed oil or avocado oil is best. And then let's place our sweet potato inside just to give it a little bit of color. I've parboiled the sweet potato just so it speeds the cooking process up. At the same time, you just want to get your broccoli but face them down so that the points are facing up. 
just to get a bit of color on the actual fluorescence. Here you want to add your garlic, then all your chili. And if you smell it, you get that garlic coming through. Now you get a bit of the chili, that spice coming, the sweet potatoes predominant. You just get this full broccoli flavor coming through. I just want to add some of the toasted sesame seeds on top of it. So that's slightly toast as well at the bottom of the pan. I'm just going to deglaze. When I say deglaze, it's just to lift some of the flavor that's been catching to the base of the pan up with a touch of chicken stock. And then the oyster, sesame oil, peanut oil mixture that I've had with a bit of the soya sauce inside. Not too many because you don't want to overpower the actual clean flavor of the sweet potato and the broccoli. We're just going to leave it in the pan so all the flavors come together. You can actually see it's emulsifying. You just want to turn your sweet potato around so that flavor sort of soaks inside of it and your broccoli is sort of getting all of that color. Oh, that's perfect. You don't want to cook it more than this here. Okay, just take your broccoli sweet potato off and let it stay warm and then you just want to get your broccoli puree to heat up. Instead of using any butter or cream in there, I'd add a little bit of xanthan gum and some olive oil. It emulsifies and brings a smoothness to the actual puree. You can get your xanthan gum and most of these health products at any wellness center. Okay, perfect. Nice and warm. I just want to get the chicken and sort of get it out of the bag because it's perfectly cooked now. Oh, nice and moist, so it's literally just cooking on its own juices. I'm just going to plate up right now. Okay, we're just going to start with a bit of the broccoli puree. Just going to get a little small, neat dollop at the base of your plate. A bit of the broccoli at the base, some of the sweet potato. And you want to get all of the chili and the garlic with it as well, because that's the flavor. I just want to slice the chicken breast now. It's literally like butter. You can even see how the knife cuts through it. And you can look inside, wow, look at it. And then lastly, your sauce. And there we go, your healthy style of chicken and broccoli. Dion, that looks beautiful. Dion, thank you so much for your time. I love that all the dishes we've prepared not only look beautiful, but I know are also delicious and nutritious. Thank you very much for having me again. This is a menu that will work equally well for lunch or supper with no guilt and loads of goodness, flavours and textures.